Hello and welcome. I am Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Thank you for joining us for the second session of our timely and important discussion on the future of education. During this hour, we're going to take stock of colleges, universities, and students as they navigate what has already become a very chaotic start to the academic year. I'd like to thank our sponsors, both Nokia and the Walton Family Foundation, for their support of today's discussions. With many states and college towns now experiencing coronavirus spikes among young adults, administrators are trying to figure out how to keep their campuses safe while continuing to teach. We're going to be hearing from leaders of universities, community colleges, HBCUs, you know, historically black colleges uh, and universities in the United States and many others. Before we get underway, a quick reminder. You can tweet us at, at the Hill events using the hashtag, hashtag the Hill ED. We're broadcasting live and we'll be taking your questions throughout the program. As with any live stream, you could experience occasional trouble with the video. Refreshing the page should in most cases fix the problem. To help kick off the program, we're joined by Dr. Mary Schmidt Campbell, president of Spelman College. This fall, classes are all virtual at Spelman, the country's oldest liberal arts college for black women. As learning moves online, we're eager to learn how Spelman and other historically black colleges are navigating the pandemic. Dr. Campbell, it's such a pleasure to be with you today. Let me just Thanks. start with a kind of left wing here, you know, left, I don't know, left ball, you know, left field ball, you know, whatever. We heard a lot of talk in at both political conventions, Republican, Democrat, about everyone's support and money given to historical uh, uh, black colleges and universities. And I just want to pressure test um, what we heard from Washington and hear from you in this time of pandemic, in this time of racial strife, in this time when education is harder and tougher than ever. Do you feel as robustly supported by both parties as they're both um, um, uh, declaring? So I, I haven't thought of it in, ter in political terms, to be very honest with you. Uh, we have built over the years uh, incredible relationships with people who care about our mission. They care about our students. They care about the gaps and inequities that HBCUs close. And uh, this moment has certainly accelerated a lot of people to think even more deeply about their contributions, but we don't ask them what political party they're with when they come through the door. Well, that's a good thing, because I, I heard a, a lot about it, but I also know that, that students, schools, teachers, administrators are under, under stress in this time. Tell us what your North Star is. You've decided to take all courses online. Uh, what is, how do you navigate this? I mean, we're going to have a lot of other educators on today, and they've made different calls, and they're sort of looking. At, but what are the boundaries that matter? What are the, what's the North Star in making some of the decisions you've had to make? The North Star for us was very clear um, as soon as this, this uh, pandemic erupted, and that was the health, safety, and well-being of our students, our faculty, and our staff. Um, it's no secret that coronavirus is a bigger threat to black communities and Latinx communities than it is to communities at large. It's no, uh, it's, it's no mystery that it, it strikes our communities more severely. Uh, the death rates are higher uh, and the lingering effects if someone is ill with coronavirus are worse. So we felt it was very important that whatever decision we made, our students had to be safe and our workforce had to be safe. And that included the faculty and every single person who works here on this campus. So that was our North Star. And then the second aspect, I have to say right after that was academic excellence. I mean, Spelman is known for its academic excellence and it was extremely important to us that we preserve every aspect of that. You know, one of the things that Spelman is known for is producing um, and graduating uh, female African-American scientists. Um, just yesterday, I happened to interview Michelle McMurray Heath, who's the new uh, CEO of the Biotechnology Innovation Organization, um, again, African-American, about what we do, what the nation needs to do to solve you know, its diversity challenges in science. You play a big role in that. And, and I'd just love to get your insights while we're talking about this time about how you're succeeding and, and how other institutions can replicate and copy what you're doing? I, I think the, that Spellman's role in, in the development of black women scientists is, is sterling, and it's also distinctive. Um, we made a decision as an institution over 30 years ago that this is where we were going to invest 
time and energy and our will. And I think that's a very important part of it, our will. And there was a, a black mathematician, a woman, Etta Faulkner, who uh, step by step laid out a plan that Spellman pretty much follows to this day. Number one was to get faculty just like herself. That is mm. faculty who were accomplished and who really cared about the success of their students. The second thing is she, she went to the federal government. She went to NASA, she went to NSF, she went everywhere to say, if you make that investment in us, we're going to yield real outcomes. She set up summer programs that gave students an immersive experience to, for them to get a leg up on, on fundamental mathematics uh, and begin to understand the level of performance that was required from them. She really helped them think about graduate school and the choices that they were going to make and then help them make those, make those applications into graduate schools. And the result is that for over 30 years, the college has built on that reputation. So now the Department of Defense has designated us um, a center of excellence for minority women in STEM, uh, the first national uh, center to, to, to be with that designation. Now, you have been uh, an educator and, and a thought leader running institutions um, for a good part of your career. And I'm interested in, in, in whether or not this moment of stress is one where institutions like yours, but others um, out there, need to be introspective about the role they play in society, about the cost uh, uh, of school, of what the social contract is uh, with students regarding credentialing and whether we need more nimble responses. So when you kind of think about the role of an institution today and try to get this right, particularly as we think about the social contract with these people coming through and what they're left with when they graduate. Do you think some of this needs to be rewired? I, I yes, is the short, short answer. <laughs> and, and, and we've thought about that very carefully at Spelman because one our top strategic goal at the college right now is for every single one of our students who's enrolled here to graduate. And not only to graduate, but to come out with a competitive edge, to come out with the skills and competencies where they'll not just get a job, but they'll be leaders uh, in their field. And one of the things that we have seen definitively is that the biggest barrier to our students succeeding um, and, and completing that college degree is financial. Hmm. So one of the things we're doing, obviously, is raising lots of money for scholarship aid. But the other thing that we're doing that I think is equally as important is we're looking at all the ways that we can make Spelman more affordable. So summer school, we offer summer school online and it's deeply discounted. So if I'm a student and I take a couple of courses in summer school, I'm able to bring down my cost of attendance. This year for COVID, we discounted our academic year tuition by 10%, and then if you add on the fees that we discounted, it was a total of a 14% discount. Um, because we had the, 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 the very generous gifts that we re received, we were able to give every single student over and beyond her, her financial aid another award of $3,000. The result is that our students, our enrollment is now up over last year. Now, to your question about competencies and what they're studying, we began a few years ago to get our students to start thinking when the, the day they come into the door, how am I designing my choice of courses mm. to lead me to a career, to graduate school, to a profession, to understanding what are the, what are the skill sets that I'm going to need to hone while I'm here and what experiential opportunities should I be seeking in the form of internships or research opportunities or work study opportunities to help me get there? You know, just finally, um, I'm, I'm interested in, 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 you know, the broad uh, uh, question of how do you take a university, university experience you have, and you have students today, and we've been talking earlier in today's program about empathy. I know this is a very meta question, but it's come up repeatedly, particularly when we're talking about K through 12, communities of color, 
that the most important thing between teachers and students, between students and students, is to instill this sense of concern for others, empathy for others, because they feel, it feels like it's evaporating. And I'm just interested because I can just feel in the vibe you have right now with your skull and skull that you, you must be thinking about that. And, and so I just want to ask you this serious question of what are your insights today? And we see so many people, you know, disregarding each other. How do you, how do you kind of turn the dial on getting them to regard each other? So one of the most striking things that I discovered when I came to Spelman five years ago was the level at which our, our faculty and our staff, for that matter, cared about each student's success. And, and when you talk about that empathy, that means that in the classroom, being able to look at that student and see and pay attention and see she's having trouble really understanding that. So what does, what does she need? How can I help her? What are some of the pedagogical tools that I might introduce at this point that are going to uh, make this subject come alive to her? So, so that kind of attentiveness is something that is on full display at Spelman. And one of the exciting things intellectually is that our faculty have written about it. Uh, this has become a place that uh, takes as part of its job as a university of learning how to teach better. Hmm. Uh, and sharing that among themselves. So, so I think that that comes from a place, and I know this is going to sound corny, but it's true. I, it comes from a place of love. You've got to love those students who are sitting in front of you. You really have to love them. Well, I like corny, and I think it's a great answer. And Dr. Mary Schmidt-Campbell, president of Smelman College, what an honor it is to be with you, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.